to Jabs on the Zone presented by Contenders. Sergio, while the rest of us are out here trying to find quality grooming, you, you seem to be well shaven and well cut. What's going on? I was getting tired of my beard, Chris. Uh, Ernest Hemingway said that a man with a beard will never starve. I get why. Food gets stuck on your beard, so I decided to get rid of it. Look handsome, don't I? Just as Hemingway intended. All right, we start with the UFC, which made its return on Saturday night, becoming the first professional sporting event to take place in the U.S. since mid-March. Despite one fighter testing positive for COVID-19, the event has been considered a resounding success. UFC President Dana White said, we can share what we learned here with other sports leagues who are reaching out to us and asking. So Sergio, did UFC 249 provide a blueprint for boxing's return? Yes, and I'm not a fan of the UFC or the MMA. I don't follow it. I'm not a fan, but I got to give them a lot of credit because Dana White and the whole organization they had a lot of guts doing this when everyone was against them, and it turned out to be a success. Yes, one fighter tested positive, but they did over a thousand tests. It was a success. People at home enjoyed it. Boxing needs to follow suit as long as they follow the same game plan. It was no fans, it was a small venue, and essential workers. Essential, the, the fighter's trainer, maybe a cut man, the three judges, and press. And only a handful of press. I'm talking about the creme of the creme of the press. But you won't be invited. The Lance Pugmires, Ray Bartholomews, and the Duck Fishers. Everyone else, stay at home. It was a success. Boxing needs to do it too. All right, putting that idiot insult aside, uh, I do agree that it was a success. Uh, and that boxing should follow suit. I mean, look, what UFC did, it's a blueprint that boxing can easily follow. I mean, it's the same number of people, the same number of people needed to put on a fight, the same number of fighters. You can do that. And look, I understand a desire to be as safe as possible, but if you're waiting for a time when the coronavirus is not there or the threat of it's not there, or if you're waiting for a show that you're absolutely certain you're not going to see someone test positive for coronavirus, you're going to be waiting a long time. The unfortunate reality of this, Sergio, is that this virus is probably going to be with us for the foreseeable future. So if you're professional sports and you want to draw a line, say, I'm going to make sure we're as safe as possible. If you're boxing and you say, we don't want to do events until we can make sure nobody is going to test positive, well, See you next year then. But if you're willing to take some calculated risks, as long as you're as safe as possible, boxing can do this. What Dana White did can be duplicated by boxing. Chris, this is called the hurt business. Everyone wants to get back to work. We want to get back to work. And our work, our business is hurting people. It's boxing. Of course, someone's going to get hurt inside or outside the ring. As long as you could try to maintain it and try to keep it to a minimum, which is what the UFC did. And I think they did a great job. We got to get back to work. Fighters need to eat. Promoters need to promote. You need to write. And fans need to enjoy. Let's get back to work. Look, and this was a very solid TV product. I mean... It was certainly strange to see fighters walk out with no fans around him. I was watching one preliminary fight where the fighter pretended to slap hands with fans that weren't there. And of course, you're used to seeing big hits be accompanied by big roars, a soundtrack to these types of fights. But it wasn't all that strange. I mean, the event was able to be put on with the crowd basically blackened, the lights not showing anybody, or any of the empty seats. You didn't have that visually. And the the announcing itself was perfectly normal. So if I'm boxing, jump on board this bandwagon. June, July at the latest, get back in the mix. All right, and finally, the WBC unveiled a plan last week for boxing judges to be able to judge fights from home. WBC President Mauricio Suleiman told Boxing Scene, this platform is ready to be used in case it will help to reduce the number of persons at a boxing card. However, some have voiced concerns about the judges' ability to score fights remotely. Sergio, is this a good idea or a bad idea for boxing? Uh, it's a bad idea. I'm not a fan of this idea, and I, I respect Mauricio Suleiman and the WBC, but this is a bad idea. Judges and officials have a hard time judging fights when they're standing and sitting right in front of it. 
It's just, it, it's a subjective sport. What I'm seeing here on this side of the ring, the other judge is seeing something else. You have to be there to, to, to hear the punches. To hear them is to feel them in some weird way. It's not only seeing them on a, on a monitor, on a TV screen. You're not getting the same feel for it. You're not hearing them and you're not seeing the, the sweat fly. Sometimes a punch that looks effective is not effective. You see how the fighter's legs reacted, how he walked back to his corner. Those are things you miss watching it on a TV or a monitor. It's a bad idea. This is not the way to get back, back to the hurt business, back on the, on, on the boxing train. I disagree. It shouldn't happen this way. Let's wait and, and until this thing passes and do it safely with no fans, but let's not rush things. No, I respect the WBC's attempt to limit the number of people in a venue. That's always a good thing when you're dealing with this coronavirus threat. But I'm with you. You can't ask a judge to competently score a fight when he's watching from TV. One thing I've learned, Sergio, over the last year plus in scoring uh, the DAZN fights is that there is extreme value in being that close to the action. I mean, you can tell being that close when something lands and when something doesn't, if something's blocked, if something only kind of skims off. I mean, I'll use Canelo versus Kovalev as an example. I mean, a lot of people watching on TV thought Kovalev was winning or at least close in that fight when the reality was sitting ringside, I could tell that Kovalev's punches were either being blocked or missing altogether from Canelo. And Canelo deserved to be up big on the scorecard when that fight was was stopped. So it, it just... There's too much at stake for fighters to put it in the hands of judges that are watching off uh, a remote camera. I mean, what happens, like, if a judge's Wi-Fi goes out? What happens if, you know, they're not paying attention for a certain moment? Like, there's just too much to risk with not enough reward for having these guys missing in action. No, it's just a bad idea, man. You're not going to be focused on, on the task in hand. When you're, when, a, when you're a judge and you're watching the fight in front of you, you have 10, 20,000 fans watching you watch the fight so they're keeping an eye on you they're keeping you in line they're keeping you in check along with the commission that's what you need you can't have some rogue judge watching it at home with his feet up on the table drinking coffee it's not gonna work